This week at Starbase, foundation work begins for the new Gigabay, work continues on the new tank farm expansion, and Booster 16 has an incident at the launch site. Will it have an impact on SpaceX's plans for Flight 10? Let's dig into this week's update and have a closer look. Multiple loads of sheet piles were delivered to the build site on Friday as the construction begins on the foundations of Gigabay. Workers began setting up the test article B18.1 for testing at the Massey outpost, placing the can crusher cap on top of the test article to simulate flight loads. The launch mount work platform was brought out of the parking lot near Starhopper and taken to Pad A, where work is underway to ready the pad for Flight 10. Construction crews made heavy use of the sheet pile driver at the build site, driving in dozens of piles through the day. With Booster 16's testing complete now at the launch site, it was time to send it back to the build site. The transport stand was brought out of the Starhopper lot and relocated to Pad A. The two new storage tanks for the FireX fire suppression system arrived on Saturday morning. The tank was soon brought to Pad B, and the first tank was unloaded and repositioned ahead of installation. After sunrise, Booster 16 was lifted off the launch mount and raised up to the top of the tower. Following a few minutes at the top of the tower, the chopstick arm slewed and lowered the Super Heavy booster down onto the transport stand. While the Super Heavy was inside the stand, something went wrong with the stabilizing pins and Booster 16 swung side to side, colliding with the inside edge of the transport stand multiple times before eventually coming to a rest at an angle. Eventually, the pins were reattached and the booster's position corrected. Once workers were sure the booster was securely in place, the chopsticks released the booster and lowered down to the hard stop while the ship quick disconnect arm was swung back in. Booster 16 was then moved out from the chopsticks and held at a staging area next to the pad. Tank farm work continued with the installation of the 8th liquid oxygen tank pump and the second of the new FireX tanks. Booster 16 began its journey back to the build site in the evening, heading up Highway 4 for launch preparations and any needed repairs after its collision with the transport stand. The next day, it was lifted with Mega Bay 1's bridge cranes onto a work stand, where it'll undergo extensive inspection following the static fire and the alignment faux pas on the pad. Additional tank farm work was carried out on Monday and Tuesday with an additional pump motor, launch site plumbing, vaporizer equipment, and water distribution manifolds being delivered and installed. The final manifold section for the second launch pad's water-cooled deck was also delivered, which should help increase the flight rate by reducing the wear and tear during a launch. Tarp-covered hardware rolled out of Star Factory on Wednesday morning before heading to Mega Bay 1. The hardware may be the landing tank and transfer tube assembly for Booster 18. Sheet piling work continued with crews working throughout the night to drive them into the earth, shoring up the ground for excavation. One of the Booster 18 liquid oxygen tank sections was rolled out of Star Factory and taken to Mega Bay 1 for assembly. With most of the plumbing work completed for Pad B now, Thursday saw the placement of the new concrete inside the launch site's D2 gate. A new access platform was brought into Mega Bay 1 and lifted into place, giving workers better access to the size of the 230-foot tall boosters. Switching over to Florida, Falcon 9 Booster 1085 lifted off on Friday from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral, carrying the Maxar-made 6300kg Sirius SXM-10 satellite into geostationary transfer orbit. The Falcon 9's second stage performed its first successful deorbit berm from a geostationary transfer orbit, safely disposing of the upper stage. Following the launch, Doug returned to Port Canaveral carrying both of the fairing halves, and Signet Warhorse 3 brought back a short fall of Gravitas with Booster 1085, making its eighth successful launch and recovery. After two days at the docks, Booster 1085 was lowered onto a transporter for its return to Roberts Road. Signet Warhorse 2 towed just read the instructions out on Saturday ahead of the Starlink Group 12-24 launch. Falcon 9 Booster 1083 successfully lifted off on its 12th mission on Tuesday morning, carrying 23 Starlink satellites into orbit. Bob and just read the instructions both returned to Port Canaveral two days later, carrying the fairing halves and Falcon 9 Booster to the docks to be unloaded and refurbished for their next flight. 
Falcon 9 Booster 1094 performed a static fire ahead of the Axiom 4 mission, which was scheduled for this week, but has been delayed while NASA looks over an ongoing air leak on the International Space Station. After patching holes on the Zvezda module's docking port, pressure in the module stabilized, but the station is continuing to lose air. According to a post on X, the next launch window opens on the 19th. Multiple new storage tanks were delivered to the Cape, as new launch pads continue to be built out for future launches. One year after the end of the Delta IV rocket, the mobile service tower and lightning towers at Space Launch Complex 37B were demolished, bringing an end to ULA's 23-year presence there, and clearing the way for SpaceX's lease and the construction of two new Starship launch pads at the complex. And there you have it, another SpaceX and Starbase weekly update brought to you by Lab Padre. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already, guys, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Lab Padre out.